OK, welcome to part 3 of my content creation video tutorial series and today we're going to be looking at working with images and in particular preparing images for use in websites and in information products using the GIMP package. Now, if you want to follow the rest of these tutorials and get more information about running a successful online business then head over to online-business-logic.com and let's get started. So GIMP stands for the GNU Image Manipulation Program um, it's a very powerful piece of open source software and we're just going to scratch the surface with it today. I'm going to teach you the basics of the interface, show you some simple editing techniques and show you how to crop and resize images to get them ready for popping on your website. Now, if you've not done so already then head over to www.gimp.org where you can download the product for free. It's currently available for Windows and for Linux only. There, although there is actually an unsupported an, uh, or an officially unsupported Macintosh version and you'll be able to find the links to that at GIMP.org and when you install the piece of software you'll see something that looks a little bit like this now it works slightly differently in terms of the user interface to, to some programs that you're used to because it doesn't all run within the same window in fact if we look at this palette window over here we'll notice that it's completely separate from our image window now this sometimes seems counterintuitive, especially to Windows users when you first start using the program. But once you get the hang of it, believe me, it does make things an awful lot easier, especially if you use multiple monitors because it allows you to open up your image across a whole monitor rather than having things cluttered up with um, palettes and toolbars. Okay, in terms of the menus, any menus that are directly related to the image itself will be on the image window. So, for example, if we want to change the color, uh, if we wanted to add and delete layers, then, then you'll find them over here. Anything that's to do with the GIMP package itself, we'll find those menus over on the toolbar menu. So if we want to change preferences or install extensions and that sort of thing, we'll find that over here. Okay, now if you're used to Photoshop or, or any other image manipulation software, you'll probably um, be fairly familiar with most of the tools on the toolbar. I'm not going to go through every single one in detail, but I'll just teach you some of the very basics. So. We start off with selection tools, so for example if we want to do a rectangular selection we'll use the rectangle selection tool, we can do ellipses, we can use this lasso tool to draw our own selections in. Okay. To unselect go to the select menu and select none and then if we want to be a bit more creative we can start selecting based on shade or colour. So for example if I wanted to choose, if I wanted to select the entire blue sky here I could use this um, select by colour tool the threshold is currently set to 10 okay the higher the, the higher the threshold the more um, differences in color you'll select at the same time so let's just click in the sky and you'll see what I mean okay so that's selected about uh, a third of the sky at the moment if I want to carry on adding to this selection if I hold down the shift key and click up here and down here and you can see I'm adding to the selection all the time now, if I wanted to reverse that by the way if I'd accidentally selected some of this gray roof for example and instead of holding the shift key down I'd hold the control key and that will actually reverse what I was just doing. Okay so now I've selected an area of the um, an area of the picture what do I want to do with this? Well let's say I wanted to uh, darken the sky up a little bit I'd go to this color menu I'd choose hue saturation and I can actually just uh, reduce the lightness down okay so it gives us this dark deep blue. Okay perhaps a little bit over the top <laughs> for this picture but it does give you an example of uh, of how the program works, so let's just undo that and select none again. So moving down through the uh, through the toolbar, we've got a color picker, um, we've got our zoom tool so we can zoom in and out. Um, these blue tools are all to do with uh, doing manipulation, so if I wanted to rotate the image for example, let's cancel that, or if I wanted to scale the image. Okay, so you can pretty much get a hang of these as you go through, just try each one and see what it does, and there's a very very good help menu in here as well, so if you're unsure on something give it a try. Um, if you want to add text to the image that's fairly simple click where we want it to be, type the text in um, hello world okay and then we can use these text attributes down the bottom to change the size and the uh, and the font and that sort of thing okay so let's just delete these again and go back. Uh, we've got a, a fill tool so we can fill an area that we've selected for example uh, in a specific color Okay, we've got a gradient tool as well. I won't bother doing a selection. I'll do the whole screen so you can see how that works. And then we get into our uh, drawing tools. We've got pencils and, and brushes for doing drawing. 
Um, all of these, by the way, if you want to change the attributes for the tool you're working on, it's at the bottom side, uh, bottom end of this toolbars menu. And then down towards the bottom, we've got our eraser. That's pretty obvious. Our uh, airbrush tool for doing slightly more subtle touching up of the pictures and then a few tools down the bottom which uh, I will spend a moment or two on because I find these very very useful and um, very often when you're preparing an image for the web perhaps you've, you've taken a snapshot with a digital camera and there'll be uh, distractions in there that you want to remove so for example it might be something in the background or uh, telegraph wires or that sort of thing and I just want to show you one or two of my favorite tools for, for changing this sort of stuff so for example let's uh, let's say we've got this date 1893 up here well if we didn't want that to be so prominent, we can use the blur tool. Okay, and we can just blur that out a little bit so that it uh, kind of hides it. It's very useful for for touching up blemishes and that sort of thing. The smudge tool works in a fairly similar way, but it's a bit harsher. Okay, but my favourite tool of all of these is actually this one here. It's called the clone tool, and what this does, it allows us to clone a part of an image over on top of another part. So, let's say for example we wanted to lose this yellow flower down the bottom. Uh, because if we felt it det detracted from the rest of the image, what we do is we'll select the clone tool, we'll hold the control key down um, over an area of the image that we want to clone. And in this example, I'm going to clone this piece of green grass here. When I hold the control key down, you'll see that the mouse pointer changes to the arrow. And I'm going to single click, and then I'm going to paste over the top. And you can see that it is actually cloning the grass from over here on top of this image. Let's do it again over here. I'm going to clone this piece of grass here. And there we go. And it, it's very useful for touching up images and um, uh, losing some of the blemishes and just getting things a bit more professional, which is fantastic. Okay, so that's a brief overview of some of the tools that you can use. As I said, there's an awful lot more you can do. And uh, if you go through some of the help tutorials or look at some of my other videos, you'll, uh, you'll get the hang of them. But let's just very quickly look at cropping and resizing as well. Cropping means actually cutting a part of the image out or reducing the size of it. So for example, if I wanted to um, turn this into a widescreen uh, shot and lose some of the blue sky, then I could use my rectangular selection tool. And I'm going to select the bottom two thirds or so of the image, like so. And I'm going to go to image and crop to selection. There we go. So I've actually just cropped the image down. And obviously if you wanted to crop it the other way, image of crop. So that allows you to get the image to roughly the dimensions that you want. The next thing we want to do is look at uh, resizing the image. So very often, especially if you're taking images from a camera or if you're doing screenshots to, to put on a blog or that sort of thing, the image that you end up with is going to be too large. Now this image is actually 500 pixels wide by 375 pixels high. So let's say for example we've got a space on our blog or our website where we want to paste this image but it's only 250 pixels wide. Well, it's not a problem. What we'll do is we'll go to Image and Scale. And that's just appeared outside of the video. Let me drag that in. OK, so I'm going to change the width to 250. And then I'm going to click on this um, Chain Link tool here. And you'll see that the, the height's currently at 375. When I click on here, it'll constrain the proportion so that it will be in proportion with the new width. OK, and I click Scale. And there we go, there's our new completed image. So there we go, hopefully that's uh, a brief introduction to the GIMP for you. It gives you an idea of how you uh, go about using the package and some of the, some of the basic features and um, how to start preparing images for the internet. Uh, that's it for today's video. Tomorrow we're going to have a look at uh, using audio on the web. And uh, thanks for listening.